Hi, you're here with the Intersection Podcast, Diverse Folks Converse. Today we are on episode four, and the title of our podcast is Rage to Rainbows, Turning Cyberbullying into Agentive Social Change. My name is Dr. Shannon Wong-Lerner. I am a communication coach and consultant. And then we have... My name- my name is Madison Butler. I am a VP of People for a startup in Austin, Texas, as well as a COO and Chief Facilitator for C Pine. Thank you. Awesome. And I'm Emily Weltman. I am a business strategy and content strategy consultant for um, entrepreneurs and solopreneurs in Portland, Oregon, and also the co-founder with Madison of Rage to Rainbows. Wonderful. So we do have both of the co-founders of Rage to Rainbows here. And this is an organization they just launched, which is very exciting. It's something that caught my eye just because I love the way that they're taking something that we see as like a systemic problem in terms of racism, in terms of homophobia, in terms of sexism. When people troll your account, especially when you're very visible, and they start writing very negative things, very hurtful things, very racist things. So instead of engaging them in fights, which I'm sure all of us have done, Madison and Emily came up with this wonderful idea to turn that hate, to turn that negativity into something that's very practical and positive for the different organization that, organizations that they've engaged. And so I don't know, Madison, when we spoke before, you. Talk, talked about your story and you just said how you came up with this idea and then Emily you talked about how you got involved do you want to just start there and just kind of give us a sense of how this happened and how you got to this point where you came up with this idea for Rage to Rainbows yeah for sure so you know I have been posting a uh, spicy content for as long as <laughs> I can remember at this point it's been a while Um, And the more I talked about hard conversations, the more I talked about the intersections of race and sexuality and all of these things that impact us on a daily basis in corporate America, um, the angrier my comment section got. Mm -hmm. Um, When I kind of moved from talking about just recruiting where no one said anything negative um, to these new topics, it really changed the way people interacted with me. And at first, I'm I'm a spicy girl myself. Um, I love a good debate. And so I would always engage with these people because I do want people to learn and I want them to do better, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. Um, There's an expense to that. There's a lot of emotional labor behind that, especially when people aren't actually interested in learning. They're more interested in demonizing you and making you feel ashamed and all of these things. And so I was trying to think of ways where I could take that energy and make it something better. I know I am not the only person who experiences online hate. Mine is just a little bit more public than, you know, the average person. And so I had made a post in June where I was like, listen, instead of engaging with y'all um, for your misogynistic comments, I'm donating to the Loveland Foundation. For your racist comments, I'm donating to this organization. And like, I didn't think it was that spicy of a post. I thought that was just like, I was like, oh, this is actually like really tame for me. Um, but somehow I got death threats. From that post, Mm. people were so enraged about the idea of me donating to these organizations that they stand so against Mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, I have to do it then. Um, So I started, you know, thinking about it. And then Emily had reached out to me um, and we just, we started talking about it. But in the middle of us talking about it, um, the world's largest troll uh, made a 30 minute video about me on YouTube and they have a hundred thousand subs and kind of just an overwhelming inter- internet personality, which led to like real life death threats, like people at my front door. Um, so I think that's when Emily and I realized that we had to make this a real tangible thing. Yeah, that's intense. And I feel like it's really interesting to think about some, a post that you felt like wasn't going to be that big of a deal actually turned out to be a very big deal in the way that people responded. And just the idea that that the comments that the the change that they hope that they would make this sort of like negative change that goes nowhere or a way to sort of shut you down or like maybe shut you up, right? Actually had an opposite effect. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of the problem is like, especially white men spend a lot of time trying to shut me up. Yes. Um, and I'm just not that kind of person. I'm not gonna let anyone shut me up except myself. 
Um, and sometimes I don't even do that. And that's not that great either. But <laughs> I'm definitely not going to let other people dictate that for me. Yeah. Um, and I think people get really frustrated when they realize like they literally have no impact on what I say and what I do. Like you can be mad about it today and I guarantee I'm still going to post something spicy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I, w I definitely want to circle back around to that idea of the energy that you're creating and sort of like the momentum that you're creating with your social media presence and how you see that. Because I think a lot of us, like for me, this is something I've just started. And I know when I feel, when I feel fearful and when I see like a hate post, I actually do kind of shut down for a little bit. So I definitely want to circle around to that because I feel like a lot of people want, would like to hear how you do that. Uh, Emily, I'd love to hear about how you got involved and just how you're a part of this and how you, it seemed like from what Madison said, you also kind of like helped, cre helped take Madison's idea and sort of like contribute to it to make it part of what it yeah. is now. Yeah, for sure. So um, Madison and I connected prior to June and um, you know, I was, we kept, I kept looking for ways to work with her because I think she's got some really awesome ideas and I know she has a day job, but I'm <laughs> all about like women, you know, amplifying women's really awesome ideas. And, um, as many people, especially that one troll that got into her comments that day, um, negatively, there was just as many people that were like, this is such a brilliant idea. And I was like, no, this really is a brilliant idea. Like we have to do this. And then I think that, um, you know, I obviously you know, Madison and I started to also just like as friends, she would text me screenshots of stupid things people would say um, <laughs> when that death threats really happened and she had to literally leave her house for a month. Mm. Um, you know, we were texting through that. And um, so we, you know, we, was, we were forming a friendship besides all of this, um, but we were also just bonding on the fact that like, you know, we're both really big um, future of work and workplace advocates. And we're really, uh, we have really similar views on, you know, you should be able to show up totally authentically, totally accept it, you know, radical authenticity, radical acceptance, like be yourself. Um, and that, you know, the more vocal I got, I also noticed that I got some mm. trolls. It was never to the level of Madison. And so then um, this sort of was like all happening at the same time. There was an article that came in, uh, that came out about black LinkedIn and mm -hmm. Madison was featured and that was with a lot of other women, um, that I engage with and just, you know, seeing the way that, um, tech treats women in general is awful. And then seeing, you know, social media and how we engage right now, like, and even before, this is one of the main ways we have to do work, right? Yes. And networking. And I met, I meet, I met, I met you and and Madison through this way, right? It's a great way to meet people. However, um, the moderation and the way that hate speech is dealt with is so awful, and yes. it's so disparate from me as a white woman. Most of my compl complaints, and I hate to use that word, um, Teresa Robinson is like, it's not a complaint. I'm reporting something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, at, but like, it is interesting and it was really interesting to me very early on that when I got really vocal and I started having some scarier things happen they were dealt with a lot swifter than than Madison's had been Madison's mm. didn't get re removed in fact one time her she she had her account suspended for a week while they investigated the hate speech mm. right that's what happened right something like that um, it was a little, it was a little less time, but they took my whole post down for like a week while they investigated my, well, the comments on my post. And I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense. Um, and so I think that's, that's part of it. I mean, even when that woman posted that video about me, they basically used my LinkedIn, LinkedIn content as the basis of their post. Mm -hmm. And LinkedIn still refused to remove her from the platform, mm -hmm. despite using my content from their site to basically make people feel pretty violent um yeah. it wasn't like the the comments weren't tame there were definitely comments that were like gory and very graphic and LinkedIn was like well she did it on another platform so we can't help you despite the fact that she used their platform as a launch pad yeah so so just to finish your your question about how I got involved that was sort of the impetus for me getting involved what part of it was just seeing the way that they treat us differently Part of it was just loving Madison's idea. And then also just on my own, I'm really interested in making tech safer um, and amplifying um, you know, spaces that are better for women in tech mm -hmm. than what we currently have to deal with. Because yeah. you know, the way they moderate, the way that their um, codes of conduct are either listed on their website or enforced are useless for the most mm -hmm. part, and they don't protect the, the victim. 
Um, and so, you know, I got kind of pushy with Madison and then I just kept being like, we're going to do this. And we started out, it was a spreadsheet. <laughs> like, we're like, I'm going to take Madison's thing, you know, ideas. I took all the orgs she suggested, put it in a spreadsheet. And we would talk every week and, you know, one of us would be like, we should add to the spreadsheet or we should do like, and then a week before Thanksgiving, we knew Giving Tuesday was coming up and it sort of just all came together. Like mm. these ideas sort of do it just like happened. And um, I had also been really frustrated with stuff that was happening in Portland over the summer and had written something um, with my son holding up a picture of a Black Lives Matter statement that mm. he drew in rainbows. And I was like, so angry. And I wrote this thing about like having to turn rage into rainbows. And Madison and I were talking about like, this should be uh, don't hate donate. And I was like, this is rage to rainbows. Like this yes. is that incarnate. And I was like, I can't, what else would I use it for? Like, let's do it. Um, and I think it works with Madison too. She's got like the rainbow in her <laughs> profile always, except <laughs> when LinkedIn made her take it off for a minute. Oh, no. Like, um, yeah, I mean, LinkedIn may makes people adjust their their names, take the pronouns mm -hmm. out sometimes. For no oh, I reason. didn't know that. Do you- Wait, uh, so- Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, so like very ironically, this happened a couple days ago, but so I had a bunch of um, really like gross comments that I decided to actually post about. So I redact people's names because I don't want to get kicked off of LinkedIn. Um, but LinkedIn reached out to me and they were like, can you provide us their links? And I was like, oh. y'all find their links? Yeah. Like, is that your job? <laughs> yes. And they were like, well, can, and can you provide us your email so we can follow up with you? And I was like, shouldn't you have access to all of that? So like, even when you report things and even when they find things out, they still make you do more work to mm. essentially help them not do anything. How interesting. Yeah, I feel like the way you're, you two are getting involved and even just like speaking out about what's happening to me is even just like a step that I feel like a lot of, you know, people of color and like people who are targeted don't take because we're just so busy. We just don't want to think that we want to do that at all. So I'm really curious about like you're telling, telling me a little about your personal stories and how you came together is how do you think this sort of awareness of bullying, trolling, you know, the cyber bullying that people of color, that black and brown people and women face on LinkedIn and perhaps other social media platforms, how do you think this awareness will help others like within these groups and then maybe even how it'll ripple outside of these groups? How, how do you think the Rage to Rainbows will do that? So for me, um, I think it is indicative of how people treat other people. Mm -hmm. And so if you're so bold to say hateful things, racist things, homophobic things to me online, a stranger, you don't know in full view of your company, what are you saying to the black person, the gay person, the woman sitting next to you at work, the woman you're in a meeting with, that black person that you interviewed? I think in order to make workspaces safer, we have to start in the places where people feel anonymous. Yes. Because the boldness that comes from feeling anonymous, they feel that all the time. Sure. They're, they're doing it all the time. And it may not be as blatant or as bold or as outright, but that hate doesn't go away. They just change how they position it. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's an okay thing to do. And it, the more we ignore it and the more we think about, well, it's on their personal time. Like you don't turn off racism from eight to five. That's not mm -hmm. how it works. And we do harm by deciding that's how it works. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you, Emily. There we go. Better? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, said, yeah, I told you, new, new mic. Um, it's okay. <laughs> you, you, you said something about, um, you know, um, marginalized people being really busy. And I think that that is, is part of it. I also think that, like, and that's part of the reason that I decided to keep speaking up, even when, like, the first feelings of, you know, when you got loud and had, like, a, little, a, few, fo a few people following you and then immediately, like, some things come in. I, 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 you know, you have a moment where you're like, do I do this or do I not? And I think Madison also had that when the, you know, after, after the, you know, um, woman, that terrible person who was trolling her, um, put her account private. But then, you know, when we decided to kind of do this, we were like, well, we have to just, there's no private about this. Yes. I mean, and, and she wasn't private everywhere, but just, you know, certain, certain things. And I had done the same, like, do I not post about this one thing or do I, you know, um, do I not speak up about this? And so, I think the part of it is for me, because, um, you know, you asked earlier, like why I got involved as a woman with white privilege, like I can speak up and the trauma is not going to be the same. Now mm -hmm. I have my own trauma there as my, 
my friend Amelie says there's no winning in the oppression Olympics. There's no gold stars for who has the mo who's the most oppressed. However, black women right now in America are having a pretty hard time. Mm -hmm. um, black queer women, I would say, Madison's probably at the intersection of a lot of these things, right? And so for me, it's, it's not about time. It's that she shouldn't have to deal with all of that hate on her own. Sure. And in fact, she should have more people like, you know, backing her up. And I think that that's what I felt like when Rage to Rainbows has been really successful in the last few weeks, just since we've launched, is that if I see something happening or we engage with somebody, it's like the, that we have their back, we see what's happening, like we're mm -hmm. witnesses. And I think that that's part of it, um, for me anyway. What are some of the responses you've had so far since you've launched? It's been a few, two to three weeks, right? Yeah. You want to take well, that? I <laughs> I don't oh. know where to go. Oh, okay. yeah. no, you can go if you want. You, you, oh, um, I mean, responses, I think, you know, Madison had a great response when she posted about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, had, we had a great response right away. Uh, I think that, you know, because it's a side thing for us right now, um, because we don't really know exactly what we're doing with it, mm -hmm. what we want to do, do with it, um, it's not necessarily like becoming a huge thing um, because we're not posting every day and engaging every day, but we are using it um, as kind of a touch point and we're still, we've been donating. Um, I think as I've been telling Madison all week, I'm like, I'm going to start like this whole week talking to people about, Hey, you loved this idea. Don't forget to put your donation at yes. the end of the year. Um, you know, and we want to make sure that people really are putting, as Madison said, put your money where your mouth is, right? Like in this way. And except that Madison says, I'm going to put my money where your mouth is, right? <laughs> That's what you said in that post, right? Yeah. The original yep. post, yeah. And it was so, like really ironic because when I said that, people were like, well, you're going to go broke. And I was like, I feel like you're just telling me you're a racist, but okay. <laughs> yeah, that's really <laughs> racist. <laughs> well, and I mean, that's not a reason to not do it. Like that was me like, okay, if they're going to, if Madison's going to go broke, then let's all back them up with mm -hmm. donations and matches, which is why we were all like, no, you won't go broke. Half of the time I'm like, don't, you shouldn't donate. Like at the end of the day, the person that's victimized and having the trauma really shouldn't be giving away their money. I mean, the idea is great, but really like Madison's already paying for it. Like it's people like me, I feel like should pay for it because we have built up the society and benefited from the society. And this is how we can help mm -hmm. move things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I'm curious about, Perhaps, I know it just started for you too, but some of like the greatest impact you've had so far and responses and then what you hope for the future. And it's okay. I know you said you're still like, this is a side gig and you're still figuring that out, but I'd love to just kind of dream for a moment and think about what that could be. I think for me, like if you think about what I want my legacy to be and what I want mm -hmm. my mission to be, it means I want people who come after me to never think that corporate spaces were made for them. And until we deal with the rhetoric that exists within these spaces, we'll never get there. And so that's really my goal is to create spaces that were meant for everyone, yeah. not just the people that fit into these corporate boxes, not just the people who got to go to Ivy Leagues. There is space for everyone to be successful, but people won't believe that until they mm. feel like they can come into a place and be completely safe. And unfortunately, online is a huge portion of what we do these days. And there's no escaping that. There's no going back. There's no like heading back to 1993 and hoping for the best. We have to prioritize online safety or we can't prioritize workplace safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense. Did you want to add to that at all, Emily? I mean, ditto. That's okay. Why <laughs> that's why we're aligned. I mean, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I, we just both want to be, make work better for people mm -hmm. and make it a place that anybody can show up as themselves, um, remove obstacles, barriers to entry from, like Madison said, pedigree and where, you, where you're from, mm -hmm. um, how you speak um, or dress or, you know, as if you have colored hair, like, <laughs> uh, you know, like <laughs> that shouldn't be a judgment on how professional you are and defining professional is a whole episode for me. Um, but I think, yeah, ditto, ditto, and I think I'm really interested in, in finding ways to make tech safer and, and finding platforms that are better or building them. Yeah, 
I'd love to hear more about, and you mentioned a few of them already, Madison, but I'd love to hear just about the organizations that you chose to work with and why you chose to work with those organizations. For sure. Um, so for me, like my number one um, was the domestic violence hotline. Um, it's very close to me as a domestic violence survivor. Um, but there's so many characteristics and a lot of the comments I get mm. um, that feel very similar to narcissistic abuse. Um, and then we also picked the Loveland Foundation, which helps people of color and black women um, have access to mental health care. Um, because bullying shouldn't be something that you have to keep inside. It shouldn't be something that you don't talk about. Um, I know for me that therapy has been wildly helpful, but I also know it's a privilege to have access to it. Mm -hmm. um, and not everyone has that privilege. And I wanna make sure that anyone who needs it or wants it has the ability to keep themselves safe, whatever that means for them. Yeah, that sounds really yeah. good. And I think that the, the nice thing about this is we're not collecting donations. We're not collecting private information. We are simply tracking the impact. So if we donate something, we put it in, people can put it in a Google form anonymously. And really all we need to know is the, the amount and the, the, mm -hmm. um, the org. They can pick their own org. So Madison and I, I you know, she identified a bunch. We talked, we add, she added a couple, and then um, I added a few but really you don't have to use these these are just our suggestions and we've i've checked most of them through guidestar and made sure that they have good ratings and that they're like legit and giving money is actually going to the cause rather than to operations yeah um Could but you, oh and would you yeah. mind just telling me a more a few of the others because i sure yeah so um there i think we have like we're already up to like 15 on the site I oh feel wow like. um i uh the nwacp um uh human rights campaign. So we try to, you know, the idea was like to tailor it to the hate speech. But yes. like Madison said, misogyny is usually a pretty good through thread. Racism is a pretty good through thread. So you can check those off. Um, Madison, can you, I, I know Cupcake Girls is one that is local to me and um, they help uh, uh, women who've been sex trafficked and women in the sex working industry. And as we talk about workplace, like sex work is work. and. I used to be on the board there, so I added that one because I know them and I know the work that they do on the ground is so great. Um, but do you, can you think of other ones? Planned Hopefully Parenthood, not. There you go. Thank Girls, you. ACLU, Domestic Workers Alliance, uh, Freedom, Minnesota Freedom Fund, um, Trevor Project. Yes. And I'm, I'm curious. I pulled just, it up. I didn't remember those. Oh, you. I know. No, thank you. I was, I was going to do it. Good job. I'm thinking about both of your stories and just the impact of Rage to Rainbows, even up to now, and then what it could be as it you know, comes to fruition. And I know that when I first started on LinkedIn, which wasn't that long ago, I guess I came out on LinkedIn at the end of June, so I want to do it for Pride. And so that was, that's very fresh. <laughs> and then the first time I received a hate message, it was really gruesome. It was it just it was actually the first time i ever received a hate message at all and i for me it was like an alarm going off and i felt like i couldn't like i didn't know what to do i reported it and it was i think it was taken down it was actually at least taken down from my visibility i'm not sure if it was taken down but the thing that really sort of shifted the way i respond now to those messages that i'm getting more visibility is you know reading the new york times article madison was in like seeing your post, seeing a lot of the people's posts that are in that, that were in that article, seeing Emily's post, and kind of just like this unabashed, like courage in the way that you speak, but also in a way that I feel like you're relating to me when I hear it. I wrote that LinkedIn, I also wrote that LinkedIn article where I talk about that in terms of like self-care and public speaking for people of color. And so I'm really curious because I feel like it's really wonderful to donate, like put your money where your mouth is. I'm also curious about like the small things that perhaps the listeners of the, of the intersection can do too. Like one tip you gave me, Madison, that I started using, it saved me a lot of time is when I see this rant that is just doesn't make sense. Instead of taking a half hour of my time, which is a lot, and educating someone when they could just like look this thing up on Google because they're an adult and they can figure out how to do that. Oh, that's interesting because now that I'm not doing that codependent thing, I see other people doing it, you know, for me. I'm like, okay, well, I just write like one sentence on what the post is about. 
right? Like this post is about microaggressions directed towards people of color. Bam, that's it. I'm, yeah, like, I'm I guess done. That, I get that a lot, especially when I, I post things about black women. People are like, well, what about other women? And I, I just yes. respond with this post yes. is about black women yeah. and it is still about yes. black women. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious about like the mindset, like how you got to that point to figure that out. Cause it's also like a time management thing, right? Like I think as people of color, as you know, as queer people, like sometimes we feel like our time doesn't matter as much. I know for me, it took me a long time to figure that out. And so stepping back, like letting the person who's just kind of running at the mouth, run at the mouth, say your thing really concisely, then move on. I'm just curious, like, what are some other things that that you two think that that other people can do who have just maybe started on this journey so they don't get sucked into that rage, right? They, mm -hmm. they haven't, I'm just really curious about that because to me that's one of the most fascinating things about this organization for me. So I think for me one like trauma incredibly impacted who I am today as a person. Yes. I spent a lot of time not speaking up and a lot of time being quiet because it was forced upon me um, so when I got out of it, I was like, well, I'm just going to be loud all the time for the rest of my life now. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also knowing like other people's opinions of me don't impact the validity of my own identity. Yeah. No matter what you say to me, it doesn't change who I am, how badass I am, how good I am at my job. Like none of those things change. And like on a daily basis, I get comments from men who are like, you're never going to find a job. Good luck making money. When like, I'm sitting in a house that I own and I purchased by myself before mm -hmm. 30. So like none of that changes because a white man on the internet got upset. Yeah. Um, and so it's taken me a long time to really understand that. And I think it was, it, it's been hard. There are still times where I read comments and my jaw like drops, but I have to know that hurt people hurt people because yeah. I've been that person. I've been that hurt person who hurt people. And you saying vile things to me on the internet is a reflection of something going on in your own life and not something going on in mine. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, I have so many things to, <laughs> to add as you, were, as you were both talking. Well, one, one thing I will say, just because I like to point people there. So, um, let, you know, as we said, it, this sort of came together, we threw together and it was, it was thoughtful, it had come out of the weeks, but we put together um, a pledge on our site. So um, even if you don't donate, you can pledge to kind of take on the, um, I, you know, for me, it was like take on the tips and tricks that Madison, you know, did when she was dealing with her trolls. And part of that too was, um, like you said, it's easy to get sucked in. Yeah. Madison has this, I mean, one of the reasons that I really, I mean, we really became friends is like, we're both kind of snarky and like, and like can be sarcastic. And she has a really great way of just, like dismissing people that mm. I can't even articulate. You just got to read it. But um, so to me, it was like, you know, engage once, engage twice, but that's it. Like, yeah. and, and then if you, and so for me, it's also a way to protect the pledge was a way for me to be like, all right, I, I, I'm not going to do this more than three times. I'm not going to go deep into it or argue um, because I was also getting super involved with things on Twitter and uh, you know, that's like a whole other unfettered world. And so for me, that was just really challenging. Um, yeah, you know, the other thing I'll say, because because I, I was ranting about this last night for about an hour, um, you're talking about time, mm -hmm. and that this is such a time management thing. And I will say, of course, um, I, you know, I want to keep the conversation centered. And, you know, this is inter in the intersection, right? I want to keep the conversation mm -hmm. centered around, um, you know, Black women, around um, queer women, or, or, you know, queer people, for sure. Um, I will say as a woman, one of the reasons I was emboldened to do this was because I deal with this crap too, right? We yeah. deal with so much of it. It is a time suck and women's time is already really disrespected. Sure. So from a, from a, a parenting perspective, um, you know, Eve Rodsky says like, uh, you know, men's time are, are considered diamonds and women's are sand. Like mm. there's a lot of um, discrepancy in the way that time is viewed. And so, yes, this is a way to protect our energy and our time when we're, when we're already being like, it's, it's, it's an effort to already take our time away from us more. Yeah. Right. And, and already to bring us down more. So, um, that piece of it for me is huge. So the pledge, you know, like you had asked what other things can you do? I think, you know, limiting how many times you respond, um, being an example for others of how to protect yourself, asking, reaching out for help, 
um, educate with links and things, but don't go like, you know, deep because again, Madison said it's like a Sisyphean task, right? Yes. Um, and then also in the end, I think this was really something I learned, especially um, from, um, you know, Madison and the other women in the, in the, in the Black LinkedIn article and, and others is like, I don't have to engage with you. I don't have mm-hmm. to say anything. I don't owe anything to you. It doesn't, if I, if it, if it hurts me more than it helps me, then I don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, you know, you said the alarm bells, that totally happened to me. That's exactly what happened. It's like mm-hmm. this, like, and I've had hate speech in the past. It just had never happened to me online. Mm-hmm. So like, that was a whole new thing. And I got like, you know, like freaked out about it. And then you think about, imagine that fight or flight that people are dealing with yeah. constantly. Like, sure. I mean, constantly in Madison every day, it's like, let's see what happens. And it's, you know, we joke about it, but it's not funny. I mean, it, you know, some of the things are ridiculous when we're like one person that we were like, this is so confusing. We don't know what he's saying. That's even scarier. <laughs> like, yep. You know, <laughs> And I, and I think it's it's okay to know that like just because you brought a fight to my front door it doesn't mean I have to open the door. Sure. Like it is okay to turn your notifications off. Mm-hmm. And I've learned that. And like I had somebody yesterday who was like, well, when you want to have this conversation, and I was like, cool. When you want to pay an invoice, we can have a conversation. Sure. And yeah. they were like, oh, so you're so you're full of yourself. And I was like, I'm not full of myself. However, my billable is three hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and I've already spent fifteen minutes with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for people people just, and then they go away typically. Of course. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Well, just to know like the value of your time. I think also to me, this is a, just, just a great distraction. Just like one of many distractions that I think uh, people of color, queer people, queer people of color face where, you know, if people see a a strong voice, someone has just, we have discovered our voices and we're using our voices. It's like, let's, let's use I want to assert my voice, but then they don't realize that their voice, although maybe strong in a certain sense, is not going to distract us from what we're saying, you know, because we are strong in our voices. We have found it. And now it's not just us, but it's other people, right? Because we're connecting to other people. Um, so I guess the, like the last question I want to ask is, I really love these tips on how people can get involved you know, not just with Rage with Rainbows, but with Rage of Rainbows, Rage to Rainbows, sorry, Rage to Rainbows, not Rage of Rainbows, <laughs> Rage to Rainbows mission statement and what you're doing. Uh, I'd really love to hear perhaps, you know, Rage to Rainbows URL, contact information, anything else that you two would like to share just with the Intersections audience and people with on at LinkedIn. Just any like final things you know, you want them to know it, including the actual, just the contact information and how they can get involved directly. Yeah. One thing I'll say before we share URLs and all of that sure. is that I think, um, you know, the, the, the idea of like cyberbullying isn't new, um, but the pervasiveness of it and the impact of it and the far reaching of it is definitely just increasing every day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was really fascinated. There was a big campaign. um, I can't remember the moment off the top of my head, but um, an anti-bullying campaign and a big report that came out on the impact of, um, of cyberbullying on women and girls. Um, And, you know, it, it talked, it was a global study. They looked at, you know, definitely looked at, at women of color, you know, the more marginalized women um, and, or people. And, they didn't list LinkedIn. <laughs> and I was like, hey, this is a big social network. Like it is, a, it's not social social, it's work social, but it's still social network. And so I think that being aware that any space you're in can be like this, Reddit can be like this. Like it doesn't matter where you go, you can find people in the comments that are gonna be awful. And so I think for the longer term picture of Rage to Rainbows, one of the things that we're interested in is where are there better spaces? Like, where can we go? Where can people go? And, and what do they, what do they look like? And to that end, I'll say, you know, as a, a white person who is speaking up, you know, and, and trying to, obviously I'm talking a lot, I'm a talker, but like speaking up, but also trying to give, you know, the pass the mic. Um, I've noticed that there are spaces that are supposed to be safe, but they're only as safe as the, especially the white people, but mm. anybody that can enforce the space, the code of conduct that's in there. Mm. So you can go to a space where they have a really good code of conduct and it says, you know, we, we, we um, support um, uh, marginalized people's 
comfort over white people's discomfort. Every time I say that, I say it backwards. So I got it right this time, but you know, like we, we don't care about how you feel, which is mm. fine. They shouldn't, right? Like we should be able to manage our own feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not about that, but what I've noticed is that not everybody speaks up about it. And then if you're in a room of 200 people on a Slack channel and only two women in there are women of color. And you know, if you're like, I've spoken up and then nobody else spoke, spoke Mm -hmm. up when this other white woman, you know, was like very fragile and was like, but you're telling us like, we're doing the work and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I'm just telling you to listen to this person. Um, so I think that like enforcing it and finding out like how to enforce the better spaces is a really um, interesting thing to think about from a, from Rachel Rainbow's mm-hmm. perspective. Like that's where you put good energy, backing people up, and and that you can do that, and you don't need our permission to do that. You don't, you know. I mean, and not everybody likes it, right? Like I, I could jump into a thread and be like, "Don't say that to her," and people will be like, "I don't need you," and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But you know, using your, using your privilege to speak up and protect people is something you can do immediately. And it doesn't have to be on a large scale. Okay. Thank you. I would agree. I think a a lot of people um, don't necessarily speak up because they feel like they're shaming someone or they're belittling belittling them. However, accountability is not the same as shame. Seeing the results that are the sum of your own actions is not like bias or reverse racism or all of the other things that get thrown at us. It is so important to hold people accountable because if we do not, they will just continue to harm people, whether that be in our personal lives, our friendships, our organizations. If we can't hold people accountable for the harm they cause, they will just continue to multiply that harm for years to come. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay to speak up. It should not be scarier to call out racism than it is to be a racist. That's the mission for me to try and switch that narrative. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I would say like, and in the intersection point, like any of that, right? Like Mm -hmm. racism first and foremost, that's what Rage to Rainbows was started. That's what Madison, you know, is posting about, but really backing up anybody that's being marginalized in any way, any hate speech, like, you know, uh, anti-Semitism, you know, anti-Muslim rhetoric, any, Mm -hmm. anything that like is putting somebody in a place where they're being oppressed, Mm -hmm. um, you should feel like you back them up. Yeah. Right. Madison, would you say that's, that's correct. Yeah. And I would, I would just want to add something that I feel like when I started reading both of your feeds on LinkedIn and then a few others, I just noticed like this great transparency and vulnerability and yet strength in your voices. And to me, that really is one of the main things that fuels Rage to Rainbows. And I think could also just but on its own pose as like a really good example on how to engage, right? And so I just wanted to thank both of you for that. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Did you want to share the URL and maybe something, anything perhaps like directly that's going on with Rage to Rainbows where we can get involved? Maddie, you want to take that? Yeah. So all of the (laughs) handles are Rage to Rainbows, like Mm -hmm. the number two. Um, And so you can go on there. You can join our pledge, which is also kind of like an email list. You can also... Um, donate and tell us who you're donating to, why you're donating. You can donate anonymously or not. It's really, it's really up to you and what makes you feel good and valued and safe. Great. Thank you so much. So I'll just close out the podcast right now. Uh, You've been here with your host, Dr. Shannon Wong-Lerner and guests, Madison Butler and Emily O. Weltman. And this is the fourth episode of the Intersection podcast, Diverse Folks Converse. Rage to Rainbows, transforming cyberbullying into agentive social change. Thank you so much.